Hi, I'm Elle Woodsworth and I'm a PhD student. Hi, I'm Dave Hammond, a professor in the School of Public Health at the University of Waterloo. On October the 17th, 2018, non-medical cannabis will be legalized in Canada, only the second country in the world to do so. In order to capture the Canadian policy experience, we've interviewed many stakeholders across the country prior to legalization. The series will cover how cannabis will be regulated, changes in the cannabis industry, and why Canada legalized cannabis in the first place. The task force on the legalization and regulation of cannabis in Canada was set up in the summer of 2016 by three ministers, the Minister of Health, Minister of Public Safety and the Minister of Justice, to um, provide them guidance on how a legalization and regulation framework should look like. There were nine of us on the committee, Anne McClellan was the chair, I served as the vice chair, and there were seven others from various different aspects of Canadian society, researchers, academics, law enforcement, uh, doctors, researchers, and so on. Uh, and over the course of about six months, we undertook an enormous amount of work to talk to Canadians in various parts of the country. We went coast to coast to coast. Uh, we explored a little bit outside of the Canadian boundaries. We went out to the U.S., to Washington and Colorado and talked to them about their experiences. We delivered our report at uh, the beginning of December 2016 and it formed the basis or the core of the new Bill C-45. For a long time people have wondered, why is cannabis illegal? What is the rationale? And you can find all sorts of theories and conspiracy theories and colorful conjecture. Um, but the fact is that on the basis of pure health risk alone, it doesn't appear that we can justify prohibiting this drug and imposing criminal penalties on people who use it or who d deal with it. Um, that that simply isn't proportional to the health risks associated with it um, and that there is a more sensible and a more equitable way to manage this substance in our society. So I think the answer to the question of why now is you know, because we cannot wait any longer. Uh, this is the right thing to do. At no time during the task force deliberations did we feel that this was the wrong thing to do. It was not a discussion about whether we should or should not legalize. It was how do we do it? and How do we do it in the most safe and effective way possible? I think the government's decision to legalize recreational cannabis is a fantastic, a fantastic idea. Um, it's not even just going to be able to support medical patients and their needs and also to help get rid of that illegal market um, but also will open up brand new markets bring in new entrepreneurs new innovation i'm all for it i think it was a great decision um, to legalize it however i think the implementation of it has had its hiccups to some degree problematic and i still believe that there is going to be further engagement that's required, you know, five years even after legalization um, for the market to really mature as it should. Uh, I believe that we should be, you know, very shortly after legalization start talking about amnesty for, you know, non-violent cannabis offenses. I think that's very important. I do think it's brave. I do think it is a bold first step towards a more um, understanding uh, environment to talk about these substances not as not as simply a bastion for criminality which is I think where a lot of the old dialogue was around it, it was almost like the the reputation far outweighed the actual risk to society so what I think is very brave and exciting about this is sort of to be able to say what is it like to boil it down to an elemental level and what what does this thing do and how is this different from other substances that people use whether for medical purposes or even if it's a recreational intoxicant like let's let's really have the conversation about what it is 
And when you start to dig a little bit deeper, you see the black market piece around it is actually the way bigger societal ill. The um, unnecessary incarceration of, of people who are either selling or holding this, this flower. Is that really the, what we want the legacy of it to be? I think any country that's looking at changing its policies around cannabis specifically um, has to look at its own context. Any given jurisdiction that's looking to change policy has to look at its own rationale, its own resources, its own uh, culture and, and make sure that whatever system is put in place it is consistent with those internal processes. I think fundamentally the question that we had when we went to the US states and we went to Uruguay, um, the, the, the key question that we had in our minds was what did you do that if you were us you would do differently if you could do it again? Where did you feel that you stumbled? What were the issues that you wish you'd known about? Get your data set up at baseline so that you know what are your existing, uh, as much as you can, your existing cannabis use patterns so that when you implement a legal framework, you actually have something to measure that against. You know where you started from and therefore you can interpret what your results are. It was very strongly repeated that you need to invest in education research right at the beginning before you regulate and legalize so that you have a, a substrate to work with. The other piece was to be ready for surprises that there are things that you will not anticipate and so stepping carefully uh, and, and cautiously at, at first uh, and being ready for those unintended consequences was important. And the other thing was a very strong feeling that they did this and the sky didn't fall in on their heads. They're still going. There was a bit of money for revenue, not to expect a huge amount of tax revenue, but that wasn't really our mandate, but that life went on and that it wasn't a big you know, disaster and there weren't huge public health uh, consequences. Uh, and I think that was an, an important message for us to take back is knowing that if we do this properly, if we do it well, uh, it sh it, there'll be a lot of interest, there'll be lots of excitement, there'll be plenty of stories to tell, but that over time it, it should roll and, and, and become uh, something that's part of Canadian society, much as it is already, but in a slightly different way. Whether in Canada or uh, internationally, people will be looking uh, to see what are the effects of legalization, you know? Um, and um, from you know from the public discussion that we're seeing, um, in, you know, including currently in the in the Senate, a lot of people are expecting this will be a disaster. You know, whether like skyrocketing um, use rates in the population or among youth, um, an explosion in impaired driving and collisions. Um, there are all kinds of like worst case scenarios people are picturing. Um, and first, based on what we've seen in other jurisdictions. Um, so we don't expect there to be um, a huge uh, increase in use. It seems that in jurisdictions that have legalized or decriminalized, there tends to be an initial kind of spike in use, like the novelty effect. Um, I've heard it referred to as the straw fire effect, basically, kind of burns bright for a bit and then kind of goes back down. I think it'll be really important when we judge the effectiveness of cannabis legalization for us to um, not look at cannabis in isolation, but to see what the trends are for other substance use. Um, it'll be difficult to determine you know, to what extent um, like one is responsible for the other, but to the extent that cannabis use might actually displace some alcohol use or opioid use, then that would likely be a public health win. I think some of the biggest benefits that'll come from cannabis legalization aren't tangibly you know, research results or, or data that we might expect. That'll come. I think probably for me one of the most tangible benefits is that we're taking the lid off of an activity that's been suppressed and hidden and unknown and mysterious and stigmatized for decades and looking honestly and openly at what cannabis is, how people use it, what they do with it. Um, and I think that alone is going to allow for a conversation, it's going to allow for more sensible discussion, education, um, just whether it's in schools or in the home or in the clinic, 
uh, or on the side of the bus. It's going to be something that we can talk about now and we can share our perspectives. Uh, we don't have to hide it any longer. And I think that to me is what's going to drive a lot of the information. It's going to take time. I mean, we're talking three generations of Canadians who've been brought up with a cannabis in a prohibited context. It's going to take time for people to get used to the idea that this is now legal and you know what does that mean? Uh, so my hope with that openness of conversation and dialogue and communication is that it will facilitate research, it will facilitate a better understanding of how people use it, why, what are some of the potential uh, risks and what are some of the potential therapeutic sides. I don't think Canada will be a, a champion for cannabis legalization globally. I think it'll be a reluctant hero when it comes to changing drug policy. Um, it's very much a, a, you know, a domestic policy issue right now. Um, I do think that other countries are watching carefully what's happening in Canada and how this process is being evolved. If things go well and smoothly, then we may have a story that we can take outside of our borders. But it's probably a little bit early to, to champion Canada too soon. Uh, we haven't done it yet. Uh, we're still you know, years away from knowing how it's going to settle down. So, uh, But it's an important project. Um, but I think it's much more for Canadians to, to get involved in right now than it is for the rest of the world who are just going to watch and see. My hope is that in the course of the next 10 to 20 years as this evolves that we'll start to get important answers to some of the questions that plague us today.